All right, everybody. Welcome to the Hockey Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. My name is Talon Jenkins. Joined with our hosts, we got Ryan Gilbert and Joel Meyer. Gentlemen, how the hell are we doing tonight? Doing good. Got a little bit more energy here tonight than I had last night. So hopefully we have a more uh, high energy show here. Got excited to get into some Stanley Cup futures and stuff. So yeah, I'm doing pretty good here. Doing all right myself. Uh, I was busy looking at the scores, keeping the track of uh, what's going on in the uh, the NCAA tournament. Um, nice. Uh, Got to hold on to this Texas win here. They were, uh, they were up by like, I don't know, 20 or something. And Colorado State's are pushing them. Uh, so hopefully they can hold on there. But uh, Gonzaga is running up McNeese like State, which is great. Um, yeah, so uh, things are pretty pretty good here. I feel like an absolute piece of garbage right now. I just ate a massive bowl of a Chinese hampo noodle soup from Mogollon Noodle in Toronto. It's so good. They have locations in like Calgary, I believe, as well, in Ottawa. Mogollon Noodle, uh, hand-pulled Chinese noodle soup. If you've never had it, it is fucking unbelievable. But the only problem is you feel like a total fat, fat piece of shit after. So that is where we are at right now. This is going to be a battle to get through this episode other than that we're doing good boys um let's jump right into this you know let's get in it we got tons of stuff going on in the world of sports right? we got a hockey we got a four game slate set for tomorrow which is friday the 22nd we're gonna dive into that as well as some other fun stuff uh march madness you know today was kind of like the first i know it's not like the first day but it's like the first like real day right is that how that goes yeah, yeah. this is this is the first real day all right. Well, any thoughts on March Madness so far? I know Julie just talked about it a little bit, but anything significant? Not really. Some some crazy games so far, but no no major upsets yet. Really, I mean, uh, Creighton looked in trouble for a lot of that game, but uh, they they pulled ahead there against the uh, the Zips of Akron. Um, yes, yeah, so BYU I, 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 BYU out of here. Oh yeah, that that is a big upset. They were uh, ten point favorites over. Um, mm-hmm. Who are they playing? They're Duquesne, playing, right? Uh, Duquesne? Yeah, Duquesne, Duquesne. That's right. So, yeah, the yeah, BYU was trailing the whole game and uh, could never really get it close. So, yeah, that, that was a big upset. My bad. Didn't the coach of that team, like, coach LeBron in high school or something like that? <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he yeah did. Look at that. Look at me. Basketball, college basketball insider. Just dropping nuggets left, right, and center. Let's go. Uh, that's awesome. Those are March Madness. We'll be doing its thing. If you're into that, hell yeah, have an absolute blast. Uh, what else is going on? Soccer. Tons of stuff going on in the world of soccer, I imagine. Baseball. Ryan, I so those teams, I got to ask you, those teams that are over there playing in like South, where are they, South Korea? I believe so, yeah, South Korea. Okay. So they're playing. I heard that when they come back, they have to play spring training games. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I'm not entirely sure. I think that is correct, though. So but. they start the season in South Korea, come back after, play spring training games, and then continue the season in North America. I'm sorry, dude. Your sport sucks. Like, what the <laughs> fuck are we doing here? That is, is that not insane to anybody? It, it doesn't make sense, but like, it just makes sense for yeah, because the the time difference and like the jet lag and stuff. They want to have the teams, you know, mm-hmm. rested for the actual opening day, but. I don't know. I feel like it should be uh, maybe in season. I I don't know. What, whatever. Whatever. Just don't do the spring training games. Yeah. It, or, or that. Yeah. Or just come <laughs> home and, and rest a few days and then play play yeah. real games. What are your thoughts on the Otani stuff? You're you're a, reg- you're a registered baseball pal. Any uh, it's, anything we need to know? Uh, it seems like a lot of different stories being told right now. It seems like the interpreter might be the fall guy for Otani. Uh, you know. Tiny might be another Pete Rose or Michael Jordan here. Not entirely sure, but yeah, it's going to be uh, interesting to see how that unfolds. Interesting. Joel, you have any thoughts? None whatsoever. I don't All care. Right, well, it, if he needs a new interpreter, I will be more than willing to take his place. That's all I will say. Um, tons of other stuff going on in the world of sports. Obviously, you can find all the information on the SGPN mm-hmm. website. Be sure to go check it out. That's the place to be. Uh, read the articles. Check out Ryan's fantasy hockey articles that he's pumping out weekly. It's fantasy hockey playoffs, baby. No better time than to get a little step ahead than now. Uh, and listen to the other shows when everybody does such a kick ass job. Or what else you can do is get into the Discord, baby, because Discord's always popping off. Shout out to all of our friends and pals in the Discord. This fucking cat is gonna be the death of me. Uh, everybody's having a blast in there, man. I just noticed, like, maybe like 20 minutes ago, our boy Beijing Wings, you know, he we went and hooked hooked up some stuff. Bowie, fuck off. 
uh, he went and had some awesome posts last night. I just saw those now. He's an absolute beauty. So shout out Wings and uh, shout out everybody else. And they were having an absolute blast. Right? Not that you're not making money, I'm sure. Has there been a lot of uh, a lot of March Madness talk going on in there? I haven't really been able to look today. Nah, there's, it's been pretty dead in there. Yeah, there's been some. I imagine Dilly will, will get that going. I think, is Dilly off like every Friday? It seems like he's always like just, oh, I'll just wake and bake here on my Friday. So he'll be. He uh, works so. Monday to Thursday. Yeah, 12 hour shifts, I think, or 10 mm-hmm. hours. Oh. How do you handle know everybody's schedule? <laughs> do you have like a, I a talk graph? To people. Do you have like a graph going on, like a little <laughs> chart or something? Excel. I have a memory talent. You know schedule? what that is? <laughs> uh, no, I'm like, <laughs> that's not that great. Uh, so, hi, yeah, if you want to get the Discord, reach out to myself or Ryan. We'll be sure to point you in the right direction, or you can reach out to the HCP Twitter account, social media assistant producer. We'll get you going. Like I said earlier, he's an absolute killer. Uh, or what you can do is just email your fucking work schedule to Joel Meyer, and then when you're in the email fucking response stuff, you can just say, "Hey, by the way, how do I get in the Discord?" He's like, "I'm trying to code your weekends and holiday hours, but once." on that i'll tell you how to get into it okay and then they'll <laughs> let you know and you'll be good to go that's that's good there yeah make sure you're uh subscribed to the hockey gun podcast as well if you're listening to the podcast make sure you subscribe on youtube uh, just search for the hockey gun podcast there if you're watching on youtube make sure you uh, subscribe to the podcast on apple or spotify or wherever you listen everything helps us everything helps the show and it gives you a uh, different ways to listen to you can see our beautiful faces on, on youtube as well so that's another uh bonus there Hell yeah, man. So now's normally the part of the show where you'd uh where we go through our lock dogs and totals from last show, but we recorded yesterday. These games have yet to end. So I we didn't really think this would you guys have any jokes? Somebody have a funny joke? A any joke? Jokes? Yeah, a do you have a joke? joke? Um, top of your head. It's gotta it's gotta be good. Don't give us something stupid. Gotta be a good funny joke off the top of my head. I'm really I comedian, got you. Alan. You can just I got one. Yeah. The Montreal Canadiens <laughs> making the playoffs in the next four years. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, that's, that's, I think it's going to happen. Four years. I will bet anybody any amount of money that it doesn't happen. So I'm just gonna put that <laughs> four out. years? Yeah. Free range. Anybody. Anybody Anybody you want. Any amount of money. Let's go. Make it happen. No. I'd say I'd say I'd say our buddy Mike in the Discord, but I already have his credit card information, so I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those uh, Easter eggs we're talking about. Um, do I even that, money? Yeah, sure. Oh, five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks. Deal. Four years. Okay. I mean, I'm Deal. not putting it up until then, but. I, I, I'm half convinced that we'll probably cancel the show and never talk to each other again. In the next <laughs> probably. Time. But we'll over four years, but we'll see. Four but years? Yeah. All right. I'll write that down. Deal. My future put, spreadsheet. Put it in your spreadsheet. I was going <laughs> to say. <laughs> uh, all right, right. Get to the ads here. Let's go. We're brought to you by. Who are we brought to you by? Brought to you by Cut, of course. Cut is a peer to peer social betting platform that's US based and available in 40 states. Peer-to-peer social betting is a new and better way to bet. Bet directly against your friends or other users on any event with a verifiable outcome. And they got social features like group chats, leaderboards, history, profiles, fan groups, and more. Cut offers lower, vague, and fully customizable odds. Create your own bets. They also handle the payment side of things, so you never have to chase anyone down for money. And you get cash back every single time you bet on Cut. So download Cut today in the App Store or over at Cut.com. That's K-U-T-T. And use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. And, of course, Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Pick whether your favorite players have a higher or lower stat total. You can win up to, one, win up to 100 times your money in a single night. So sign up today with promo code HGP and get your first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pick special. You can find them in the App Store or visit underdogfantasy.com. And don't forget to register with promo code HGP to get your first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pick special. Must be 18 years or older and present in the state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concern with your play, call 1-800-522-4700 or visit ncpgambling.org. Uh, see, we got our buddy Doug Doug Reed in the chat here, just giving a uh, college basketball score updates. Not sure if he's going to give an update every time someone makes a basket Doug, here, but we- Doug, <laughs> don't do it. Doug, don't do it. We do- I'm sorry, I don't care. I hate basketball. I I love college, but I hate basketball, so don't do this, please. Dilly's here though. Dilly made it, so we we can start start the actual show now. Okay, glad to know. We were just we were just stalling until then. Can we use cut for a Montreal Canadiens bet? Is that a thing theoretically we could do? We can, we can put that up there. We can get that up there. Yeah. 
There you go. Well, they don't well, have to be around in four years. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's great. Peer to peer social betting. It's 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 the uh, it's it's an it's a new 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 great thing here. No doubt. <laughs> um, all right, boys. We got a four game slate slept for Friday, March twenty second. Are you ready to rock and roll here or what? Oh yeah. Oh, squeaky. All right. First game on the dock here. We got the Carolina Hurricanes against the Washington Capitals. Game itself is in Washington. Uh, Carolina on the money line sitting at minus 185. Caps on the money line at plus 154. Over under sitting at five and a half. Over paying off minus 125. The under plus 105. Canes on the second night of a back to back here. Uh, Rye Guy, I'm going to send this one your way, buddy. Why don't you kick us off? Yeah, for to be fully transparent here, I haven't bet anything on this Friday slate yet. There's quite a few. I mean, there's four games, three pretty big favorites. Uh, Hurricanes on a back to back. They're decent on back to backs this year. So, you know, have two good goalies now with uh, Anderson and Kochekov. Kochekov's going to start tomorrow. I think the Caps here are finally due for, for their regression. I don't think they can keep this up for much longer. Uh, seventh loss to the least last time out. It was the first game back from a uh, long road trip, so it might be better this time out. But 17 11 and 5 at home it isn't great. Uh, Hurricanes 21 11 and 2 on the road. Hurricanes won in DC 6 2 back on January 5th there. Outshot them 34 17. So I think Carolina here is to play minus 185. A bit too juicy for me as of right now, but if that comes down. On the back to back, I'll probably take a minus 170 or so. Maybe a uh, Carolina team total over and a Capitals team total under, even though Ovi, Ovi's been scoring a lot. Mm. But uh like the Canes here and a, a lean to the under. I'm not sure the line will come down. I mean, we have the Tom Wilson hearing, so he'll be out for this one. Is he getting a hear for the slash? In person? in person here and here. No. Are you kidding me? He barely touched him, right? Like, I, I no, it, no, it's not that, but like, give him the four minutes and fuck off. Like, that's. I don't know. I don't for the, I don't for the slash to the teeth. You're saying, yeah, like it was bad, but it wasn't like. Yes, it was crazy. Like I, I, don't know. I got two games for not leaving the bench. I, I, I disagreed with that as well, but I don't know. I don't think that should be a suspension. He served the four minutes. The team was getting lit up. It's embarrassing mm-hmm. as it is. Anyways, I'm sorry. So yeah, Carolina on a back to back. They keep winning games. Capitals, uh, like Ryan was saying, you know, they, they play like shit against Toronto, but they just coming back from that long Western road trip. Give them some slack. They have been playing a little better over the past 10. Um, it's like they got to make teams play their way, which means just slow the game the fuck down. Otherwise, if they try to score goals, they're going to get run out of the building like that. What happened in Edmonton um, and even in Winnipeg to some extent. Um, so yeah, they got they just got to make the game ugly for them to have a chance. And the Hurricanes, I think, can beat them in that kind of game anyway. So yeah, Hurricanes, I don't think we'll let the Capitals score then. Uh, Probably more than one goal. So maybe the Capitals team total under would be a way to play this. But uh, yeah, I love the Capitals to win this game and uh, lean to the under, I guess. Give me your Kuznetsov revenge goal as well. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. Ooh, he's been a... firing in, in he has Carolina. Been. Mm-hmm. All right. Good for him. That's awesome. Um, yeah, the Carolina Hurricanes are a lot like my beautiful girlfriend. You know, even when they were a little sleepy and having like a an off day, they still look absolutely perfect. So I'm going to be all over the Carolina Hurricanes in this game on the second half of a back-to-back here. I'll take them at minus 185. I don't hate them in regulation as well. Kind of looking like they might pull out another regulation win against the Flyers tonight. If they do that, that'll be like nine of their past ten have been in regulation. So I'm going to be all over the Canes there. Uh, you guys talked about it. If you, even like Kachekov probably will get the start. He's still fucking sick. Um, the Caps five and a half on the over under. I know Lindgren like has been fine, but like and like I shouldn't say fine. Lindgren's had a great year. Maybe not great. Lindgren's had a a good year. Maybe that's the proper term for it. Um, but yeah, I, I, the way the Ovechkin scoring here, I think the over five and a half is a decent play, man. You know, we can see maybe like a four two final or something like that. I don't think that's you know out of the picture. Empty net possibilities as well to kind of help hit that six. So I like the over. I like the Canes. I also like the Canes in regulation. What one more thing here? Something the Hurricanes are doing that's making me like them more long term is they're carrying three goalies. They have they have Spencer Martin is their third string, but they're not dressing whoever's not starting out of Anderson or Kachekov. So they're getting a full night off. They're getting a full day off. They'll have to like mentally prepare like, okay, might be going in if anything happens. So that could uh, bode well for them come playoff time. Leafs are doing that too. Same thing. It's pretty cool. It's a good well, point Leafs, though. You're right. Leafs suck. Sheldon Keefe should be fired and Ron Brendamore is the best. So Carolina <laughs> gets credit for it. 
Rob Brandenburg might not fucking be there next year, all right? So as well as his entire coaching staff, which is absolutely insane. Just fucking pay the guy. Crazy. That happened uh, the last time he had a contract. Up, I know. Right? It was the same he, thing, yeah. He's just, he's just playing hardball, the Dunton. Or the owner. I know. I, th- yeah, I think he's being smart. He's like, you know, I just want to make sure that my staff are taken care of too, right? So pay them. You know, it's good guy, Rod. Good guy, Rod the Bot. What's not to like? Now, if for whatever reason he goes somewhere and he brings his entire coaching staff with him, like, could you imagine if this guy's coaching, like, I don't know, like <laughs> the the Leafs, Montreal, Philly? Oh, they're not going <laughs> to. Yeah, I don't know. Scratched again. Yeah, I was going to say, do you want to talk about that quickly? Like, we got time. No. I'm, no. I'm probably recording Broad Street Hockey tomorrow if you guys okay. care to listen on that. But be yeah, sure to just, tune in. It's that. just torts being torts. I think it's absolutely insane, but whatever. Um, all right, moving down to the APM time slot here. We got the Pittsburgh Penguins against the Dallas Stars. Game itself is in Dallas here. Pittsburgh on the money line sitting at plus 164. Stars on the money line at minus 198. The over under sitting at six and a half. Over paying off minus 105. The under minus 115. The Stars with the return of Tyler Sagan the other night. Unreal pass by Matt Duchesne on that goal. Did you guys see that? I did. It was like a two on one, right? Like two a, on one behind the back. Down, like, oh, that was nasty, dude. That was so sweet. Um, yeah, I love the stars in this game here, man. I'm already seeing this line differ at different books. I'm seeing a minus two ten at what I normally bet with. Uh, so get in. I imagine you'll probably see a lot of money come in on Dallas here. I, I just don't know why you'd bet Pittsburgh right now, man. They're in absolute shambles. Yes, I'm I'm biting my I'm biting my tongue because I used to like the Penguins to make the playoffs. It's not going to happen. They're fucked, and the Stars are trending in the right direction. Goaltending obviously has been a bit of an issue for Dallas as of late. Um, with that being said, there's no better time to fucking peak than, you know, maybe about 15 games, 10 games left in the season here. So if Ottinger can kind of find his stride, I imagine he's slated to start this game here. Uh, I'll be leaning towards the under with how well uh, Jari has played as well. So hoping that Otter can find this game and Jari in between the pipes, the under 6.5 and, and minus 115 should be good for me. Uh, and you know what? Let's get a little sexy here. Let's get a little slutty. Give me a stank of in goal. Kid's awesome. Yeah, the, the Penguins have just been struggling since since the trade deadline if not further back from there and they're even worse on the road 12 16 and 5 on the road they've lost 11 of their past 13 road games uh one of those wins was in chicago and one was that overtime game in vancouver so now they've lost uh they've lost six straight on the road as well here and dallas is good at home 21 10 and 4 i just got sagan back i didn't realize that uh, back-to-back wins, 4-1 over the Kings, 5-2 over the Coyotes here. So could see a puck line being worth a play at plus 124, especially given how Pittsburgh has been losing recently, 5-2 to the Devils, 7-4 to the Rangers. So don't mind the puck line plus 124, but I don't think I mind laying minus 200 here either. I think Dallas, much better team. They're in the playoff race. They're in the Stanley Cup contention here, and the Penguins are just waiting for the offseason. Right. And the Penguins, Penguins have given up. Uh, so the way to play this is just uh, the puck line. I think if the Stars win this game, it's probably by margin because it'll be because the Penguins just uh, just <laughs> lay dead. I mean, how many times have they been blown out in the past month? A lot. And the Stars, they do they do have a, a lot of firepower, so they can definitely get the job done. And uh, yeah, Talon's wearing his Newcastle Stars, his uh, his youth hockey team. I guess uh, I didn't know Hell that there yeah. was a town called Newcastle in Ontario there, but I guess it makes sense. There's a lot of a uh, English cities that are uh, recreated there in Ontario. Um, but yeah, the uh, stars are the way to go here and uh, lean to the over as well with, uh, yeah, the Penguins goaltending has fallen apart lately. Uh, they, they can, uh, <laughs> they're as likely to give up a goal on the power play as they are to score on the power play. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, we'll see goals, but the stronger play would be on the stars puck line. Dilly saying he lives in Newcastle. Guys. You finally found my burner in the Discord. I was never going to admit it, but I am. Catfish <laughs> <Jill>. <laughs> you kind of look alike, too. <laughs> uh, uh, my, when I go on webcam as Dilly, I just don't shower for a week. No, I'm just kidding. That's really good. I love you, Dilly. You're beauty. Uh, all right. Uh, moving down to the 9 p.m. time slot here. We have the Columbus Blue Jackets against the Colorado Avalanche. I feel really bad. That was really mean. Dilly, you're a beauty. You look great. Shut up. Uh, Columbus on the money line sit at plus 270. Colorado on the money line at minus 340. Avs on the puck line minus one and a half sit at minus 135 over under sitting at six and a half over paying off minus 122 the under plus 102 uh jolie obviously we're throwing this year away what are the chances that columbus goes in there and just beats the fucking shit out of colorado slim to none um 
I could see them winning the first period, maybe. I mean, if it weren't for the altitude, I mean, the Avalanche are coming back from a long road trip. Uh, they've had a couple days off, though, so maybe it's some, you know, some time to uh, rest and recuperate. They looked pretty, uh, pretty slow for their standards against the Blues. And but yeah, the Blue Jackets, they were the much better team against the Red Wings in their last game. But of course, they, they blew that lead late. And I could see the same kind of thing ha- happening here. Uh, they just they just can't play in the third period for whatever reason. Um, still a young team, I guess, still learning the ropes playing in the NHL and uh, very inconsistent goaltending, of course. So I'm not sure how to play this game exactly. Minus 340 is is, is just a little bit too steep given the uh, fact that the Avs are coming back from that road trip. Um, so yeah, I, I think that if anything, I would, I would play the over in this one. But yeah, if you want the Avs, it's just the puck line and just, just figure that they, they blow the Blue Jackets out of the building when they're all uh, weak and tired from them. Um, you know the altitude and whatnot, but I don't know. I don't. I didn't bet this game. I gotta ask one thing. I'm sorry, Ryan. Before you get in here, Joel, who the hell is Justice Anunin? Justice Anunin. Um, he's a Finnish guy. He's he's actually playing very well lately. Um, yeah, he's he's honestly outperformed Gorga for in the uh, for stretches of the season. So uh, it's it's good to see because the Avalanche goaltending is certainly a question mark when we might need to. Uh, uh, multiple goalies in the playoffs if one guy uh, falls apart. Um, because yeah, Georgiev hasn't exactly been consistent this year, better lately than the start of the season, but still not exactly uh, the best. But yeah, and he's a young guy, and uh, that's very encouraging because he was fairly highly touted originally. He's had a little bit of a slow development, but he's looking a lot better lately. Okay, yeah, I mean, you, you can't back the Blue Jackets here plus 270. Like, like Joel said, maybe they'll come out come up fire and maybe take them for first goal or something here. You can usually get avalanche. You can get teams to win from behind here on, on DraftKings under game props. That's probably pretty high. I mean, imagine that's blue jacket score first parlayed with avalanche to win. So, uh, but yeah, the, it's tough betting the, the as puck line past three wins have all been by one goal, um, including two in overtime, but obviously against better teams than the blue jackets, but Columbus here, Wierenski questionable, Boquist questionable on the blue line as well. Um, so they have some injury issues along with their just being a bad hockey team. So I think the Avs come out here. McKinnon gets a few points, maybe three or four, maybe you know, solidifies that Hart Trophy argument here. And yeah, Avs puck line minus 135. Or just parlay Avs with uh, the Stars. That should be uh, pretty safe. My boy Doug Reeds from Oshawa. Let's go. That's awesome. That's like 25 minutes away from Newcastle. That's sweet. I used to play a lot of hockey in Oshawa. That's cool. Um, all right, here. Uh, do to do do for this game. Yeah, Columbus on the puck line is a way to go. Minus one and a half, minus 135. I think is awesome. Now, let's get a little. You guys want to get greasy with me with all this Oshawa talk? Let's get a little greasy here. All right. Uh, you know who I really like for props in this game is Alex Nylander. Okay, Alex Nealer since being traded to Columbus in 13 games, he has 11 points. He did go pointless in his past two games, which means at one point he was sitting there at a point per game pace in Columbus. Uh, so maybe look for him as a point, but you probably find it like you know, one point for sitting like maybe minus you know, one town or some shit like that. Probably better to be told. Also, the guy has 22 shots in his past five games. So maybe look for like a over the number on shots if it's sitting at like two and a half, maybe even juice for three and a half or something. He's playing on the top line right now with Goudreau and I think Boone Jenner, former Oshawa Generals alumni. There you go. Doug Reed, it all goes full circle here. So I will be looking for some Alex Nylander props. He's actually been playing really well since he came to Columbus. And then uh, give me uh, give me the under in this game as well as give me the abs puck line. Insight. How do you like that? Who else is dropping Alex Nylander props, baby? Let's fucking go. Um, all right, final game on the dock. If we're down to the 10 p.m. time slot here, we have the Seattle Kraken against the Arizona State University Coyotes. Game itself is in Arizona State University. Uh, Seattle on the second out of the back to back. Obviously, they're playing Vegas later tonight. Uh, Kraken on the money line, sitting at minus 110. Arizona State University Coyotes on the money line at minus 110. You know what that means, boys? We got a good old fashioned. Oh, pick them, pick them, pick them, pick them, pick them. Hell yeah, we got to pick them in the desert. Absolutely love that. Uh, over, under, sit at five and a half, over, minus 120, the under, plus 100 here. Uh, shit. Shit. Who's playing tonight for Seattle? Are they confirmed that in that? Grubauer, I think. Grubauer, so we'll see Decord tomorrow. Arizona has been so bad lately. Give me Seattle minus 110, uh, even on the second half of back to back here. Uh, the, the Coyotes have just been an absolute shambles. Did you hear any of the news coming out of the GM meetings regarding Arizona? 
if they don't get this like bid for the land, there's like a more than like, you know, I don't want to say more than percentage numbers or anything, but there's a chance that this team does not play in Arizona next year. So, and from what I hear, this turmoil, like within the dressing room from players, within the staff, the arena staff, the actual like team management staff and stuff, it's just an absolute shit show. Things are blowing over right now in Arizona. And uh, th- there's no way that that reflects well on the on ice product. We've seen that as of late. They've been absolutely horrendous. Um, so yeah, I'll take Seattle even on the second ever back to back minus one ten. Why not? Uh over under in this game. I'm gonna take the over five and a half and minus one twenty. Um, neither team's really great at scoring goals, but I mean shit, dude. My Yotes, my Yotes fell off. At one point, they were looking pretty goddamn good. Then Ingram came back to earth and they've just been, you know, a bad hockey team. So yeah, give me uh give me Seattle, give me the over. Yeah, it's it's a joke that Arizona continues to get a hockey team, and they're talking about expansion instead of just relocating their them somewhere. Like Quebec built that whole whole building for them; they have no team there. They're not getting anyone, but they're going Arizona, to Utah. They're going to what? Oh, Salt Lake City. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't I don't have have much for this one. Back to back for Seattle, but they did, they did have two nights off before playing tonight, so I think they're still the better team. But I can't bet against the Coyotes at home. Seventeen, sixteen, and zero at home. So the over five hundred at home. Uh, Seattle is fourteen, twelve, and six on the road. So uh, good old fashioned pass game here for me. Probably a pass for me as well. Uh, Coyotes. I mean, I'd like the Kraken more, but I, I want to see them perf- how they perform against the Knights today. Because uh, they, they looked pretty uh, dejected the last couple of day, the last couple of games as they uh, realized they're almost certainly not making the playoffs, so they might have hit the eject button themselves. Um, so yeah, that that's a tough uh, read for me. So I want to see how they, they perform against the Knights. Maybe if they come out strong and show some will and effort and win the game, maybe they have some belief. But right now, that that's in the future. I don't know that information yet. So. I can't pick a side here. Kraken are clearly the better team. I mean, the Coyotes hit the eject button, what, in late late January already. So uh, maybe it's just a moot point. And uh, they both just quit on the season, which means the over is the right play. Um, yeah, that, that's the way I would look. I'll lean to the over. I got nothing for the side. But I guess I'll lean to the Kraken, too, because I'm not backing the Coyotes the way they've been playing for the past two months. Okay. Uh, consensus plays here, gentlemen, and then we'll dive into ads after that. Yeah, not many here. I think we're all on Carolina, minus 185 on the back-to-back, and then Dallas on the puck line, plus 124 there against uh, the Penguins. You guys going to ride with Nylander with me or no? Come on, give me some. Oh, yeah, uh, Nylander, I was looking up. He only had three shots combined in his past two games, but before that, I, I was laddering him. He was pretty profitable, so I might be back mm-hmm. on that. with them. Uh, they're at home, right? Yeah, Columbus at home? I think no? so. I don't it's, in, it's in Colorado. Oh, it's in Colorado. In it altitude. might as well be Columbus, though. I spent the whole segment talking about uh, the altitude. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you want to go to that game, you can you check did. out Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite event shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. Game Time app experience got those flash deals and killer deals on last minute tickets. Best price guarantee. So you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for any sport. And the game time guarantee means you always get the best price. If you if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So download the game time app, create an account, and use code CFBX for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CFBX for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Hell yeah. Um, all right, we're gonna do something special here, man. This is something that we've had uh we've had on the radar for a while now. We've just you know been busy with scheduling and a lot of stuff going on. We haven't been able to do it, but our very own Professor Joel Meyer has wanted to go into a playoff team tier ranking in which we rank, you know, all the teams that are expected to make playoffs, maybe some that are on the bubble, uh, and put them into uh into tiers. So uh Jolie, I guess we're going to throw this one over to you. And once you, you know, give us a little explanation and uh, we can dive right into this bad boy. Sure. We are uh, workshopping this on the fly. Not sure how we're going to do this. I don't want to exactly uh, speak for 10 minutes about every team, but so we'll have to break it at, break it up somewhere. Let you guys have your, uh, your own rankings and whatnot. But yeah, the, basically the idea is to 
you know, provide a list of all the serious contenders in the NHL. And by serious, I mean, we, we, we've got to include a few long shots, even though they're maybe not exactly likely to win. Um, you know, it's hockey, weird shit happens. But yeah, so basically, I talked about this, what, it was about a month and a half ago, um, two months ago, maybe, where uh, I've been working on a not really working on it yet, but we got we got a beta beta version of what's going to be uh, mm. a grandiose project in the summer that I'll be doing. Um, basically, working out a model mm. of, of the uh, teams likeliest to win the Stanley Cup based on history, because you know you, to uh, predict the future, you got to look at the past. And uh, we're basically trying to build a profile of a, a team that can win the Stanley Cup, the team that is likeliest to win the Stanley Cup, and, and it'll, it'll include different categories. And then the, the likeliest team to win the Stanley Cup will fit more of the categories and and so forth so the basic idea is to create an archetype of the stanley cup winner and then uh try to fit each team's as closest to that archetype as possible so uh it, it, the basic idea is to we talk about uh teams in the stanley cup window we prefer to think of it as an arc a stanley cup arc not arc as a noah's arc but an arc as a, <laughs> a trajectory <laughs> uh presumably forward trajectory although uh, some teams like the blues can win it at the end of their trajectory like that was basically the last year of their um you know window or arc uh right, right when they climax they were able to 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 uh manifest okay. everything that they've been okay towards. he's a edgar, or edgar Allan poe relax all right <laughs> uh so yeah we, we we want to think of teams as their building towards something right it's it's not you very very seldom see a team come out of nowhere to win the cup you usually have to go through uh a long painful learning process you look at all the teams that have won the cup i mean it's it's hard to find teams that haven't been been through pain to get to the end um you know you look at the capitals you look at the lightning took forever the avalanche had all those second round defeats and so forth so the idea is to uh look at a team that's what the hell is that Ryan, what the fuck? I was just my. Uh, I'm good. Go ahead. Okay. There's some buzzing going on, but uh, yeah, yeah. So, your mic. Use your giraffe <laughs> neck to hit your fucking mic. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so, uh, we get into this uh, a lot more in the summer, but uh, you know, we got the beta version right now. So, um, yeah, I don't know if you guys want to. Uh, interrupt me at some points or um maybe Stanley so Cup here. Joel, Joel, who, who's your top how many, here? how many categories do you have maybe we can just each go category by category uh well, i got one a one b two a two b three a three b and four okay so, so give me a number amount <laughs> there's 14 teams there's seven tiers so averages to two a tier but uh right. anyway i'll go through the one a and one b first how about that sure so 1A is uh, naturally the Florida Panthers. I think that they're the best team in the NHL. They fit Are they the alone NHL. at the top here? Yeah, 1A. So they, they fit the uh, the profile of a Stanley Cup winning team. They, they win a lot of these uh, close games. They're in a lot of close games. And, of course, they play playoff-style hockey the whole season long. Um, one more important thing is having a, a number one center, like legit elite number one center and a legit number one elite defenseman. And I think Gustav Forsling fits that mold. And certainly Sasha Barkov does. He's uh, still one of the more underrated guys. I'm not sure how. I mean, uh, he's, he should be up there in conversation for like top top five, top ten players in the league, really, the way he plays so consistently and all that. But, yeah, so the Florida Panthers are definitely number one A. We got the uh, legit coach who still hasn't won a Stanley Cup for some reason, despite um, what he's got he's second in terms of the most wins in the history of the NHL. So yeah, I love the Panthers. Love the way they play. I love their their depth. There, the way um, the relentless forechecking is huge. It, that's why they beat the Bruins, caught them by surprise. Um, so yeah, then and of course they've been building for a few years as well. So number one, a for the Panthers. Now we got three teams in one B. We'll start with the Stars. I mean, I've been a little bit lower on them lately because uh, <laughs> Ottinger he's still not turning it around. You keep big thinking that he will, but. It hasn't really happened, but thankfully their their offense is is so good right now that they can kind of uh, outscore teams, and they're like the Panthers involved in a lot of these close games, so they're used to this, these uh, tight playoff style hockey games. And yeah, like I said, they can outscore the problems. They have uh, Logan Stankoven coming up. That, that's basically almost as important as any uh, deadline ad, <laughs> like the way he's been playing, um, scoring every other game. It seems like, and they also have uh, a couple other guys coming from the. Uh, 
SHL, Liam Bichel, and the Maverick Bork. I think he's uh, one of the better players in um, in the minors too. So uh, stars are absolutely loaded. Again, number one elite center, Rupe Hints. You can argue if, if uh, he fits that mold, but certainly Mira Heskinen fits the mold of uh, number one elite defenseman. So, again, that's another category that they match. Um, and another team in this tier is the Carolina Hurricanes. I bumped them up lately because of the Gensel and, and surprisingly, the Kuznetsov acquisition because he's certainly turned into a force there. Like <laughs> They basically have a new second line. And you don't often get a whole new line that that's actually dangerous uh, just from the, the trade deadline. But that's what's happened. A, a legit scoring line just created out of nothing. So the Hurricanes are, are more of a force. The problem with them is that they, the way they play in the regular season it seems to tire them out when it comes to the playoffs, right? We've seen this over the past few years. Like the, They play every game like it's the playoffs, but the, the way they play just takes so much energy out of them. You saw that in the, uh, the Panthers series. The first game when they were down – or when they went to three overtimes, like they just look so exhausted by the end of it. And when they lost that game, it was like, <laughs> you can almost think a sweep is coming because they looked just dead on their feet. And they were like the rest of the series. They had no energy whatsoever. So that's the concern with the Hurricanes for me. We know about the goaltending stuff, but um, their defensive environment is so good that they can mask that uh, quite a bit. So uh, the problem, again, is, is maybe a not elite goal scorer, but Gensel, I think, can help with that because Nets off a proven winner. Probably should have won the Conn Smythe year. The Capitals won the Cup. So that certainly helps too. Um, another team I bumped up, my Colorado Avalanche in the 1B tier as well. Uh, just, just with the way that the, the acquisitions from the, the trade deadline have, have worked out so well. I mean, Casey Middlestad is, is just elevated this team right back into true contending status after uh, the departure of Ryan Johansson. And uh, Sean Walker's come in and done more than, than Bo Byron has done all year, certainly. And uh, Jakob Trennan, Brandon Duhame, these are legit playoff guys. And the Avalanche, they're really leaning into their identity, right? They're, they're not, like, looking to just add some tough guys for the sake of being tough. No, they, they went out added a bunch of fast guys to an already fast team. So uh, I like that they're leaning into this identity. Like, if they're just going to win with speed. That, that's who they are, and that's, that's how they did it a couple of years ago. So uh, I, I do like that. For the Avs, of course, we know about McCann and McCarr. Obviously, they fit the mold of number one elite center, number one elite defenseman. Uh, so, yeah, Avalanche definitely in the 1B tier now. That's All the right. end of the first segment. So do you have those teams in 1B ranked in that order, or are they all kind of like equal in, in your mind? They're all equal. I mean, they got seven tiers, basically. So they're more or less uh, equal. So I, I have Carolina as my top team. I, I think I think getting Kuznetsov and getting Gensel, Gensel off Landry, Kuznetsov off not caring about playing hockey for Washington because they suck. They're going to be, you know, rejuvenated enough and, and fresh enough to kind of carry them in the playoffs. And I think they they don't necessarily have that top defenseman, but they have Burns, Brady Shea, Rip Presky, like all, all these guys that they have the depth, kind of like how, how Vegas had. They have the scoring now. And they have the goaltending with, I think, Anderson as long as he stays healthy. And if not, Kachekov's been been fine there as a backup. And obviously, we've talked about Rod Brindamore's success or not success, but you know, whatever as a head coach, he's, he's highly regarded there. So I think this could finally be their year. I, I know they're one of the favorites. They're kind of highly regarded by the public model. So I've always been high on them. So I I have them in Florida as my uh, my top tier. Mm -hmm. So am I going through my top tier teams? Sure. Yeah. I have I, I have five groupings and each grouping actually has four teams each. So okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna any uh, team. The, I did. Well, I put some of the ones on the outside because we're we're not fine. We don't know who's gonna make it in yet, right? So don't anyways, for my no, we don't, all right. So I'll tell you what, I, I named my tiers too. All right. So oh, for yes. the first tier, the top tier, and this one, this my tier list and my category names, this one's for all the ladies, mm -hmm. all right. This is for the ladies that listen to the Hockey Gambling Podcast, okay? So my very first... My, yeah, exactly. My very first tier for the top of the league is called the Big Dick Boys, okay? And you want to know who's a part of the Big Dick Boys? First team we got, come on, the Florida Panthers. The Florida Panthers are the biggest dick boy around swing. And they play hard. They play physical. They have goaltending. They're aggressive on the puck. Defensively, they've been solid. Everybody's, I heard a lot of people saying uh, Montour has had like a, a down year. It's like guy missed like the first like 20 games or some shit like this, man. He's still an absolute start on the back end. Offensively, they play great and they buy in their great system. So they're my number one. Uh, as well in the big dick boys, I have the New York Rangers. We talked about this a little bit the last time or last show we had. Um, 
these guys, I love the holes they filled in the trade deadline, you know, just depth pieces, but everybody kind of fits and starts gelling well. Shosturkin's coming back well into his own. They have the defense play, and that is so goddamn important in playoff hockey. I don't see this Rangers team, although there are some young pieces when you look at like the likes of Capo or Alexi or Lafreniere and these guys. Yes, you know, maybe they don't think of them as the biggest, most physical guys, but they are still strong and they're not going to get bullied you know, around the front of the net. And they do have some star players. Um, I also have the Carolina Hurricanes in the Big Dick Boys as well. How do you not? They're fucking sweet, dude. Ryan touched on it too. Their trade deadline acquisitions have been solid. Uh, and if they can get goaltending, which it looks like they are getting from Kachekov and Anderson, uh, there's a lot to be desired there as well. And then the final team in my Big Dick Boys list is the Vegas Golden Knights. Joel's going to hate it. But I'll tell you what, just because they're in a wild card team doesn't mean that they're going to be a wild card team in playoffs, man. If they make it in, if they're healthy, if they have their fucking full roster that they're capable of icing, this team is a goddamn absolute menace to any team that finishes first in their division and has to play against Vegas. So, And we know that they've been there before. Goaltending has worried me. I know you guys are all hard for Aiden Hill all the time. He hasn't looked that great yet. But we have seen him have success in the postseason, you know, before. So uh, I would factor them into my big dick boys tier as well. The fact that they, you have to say, you know, if they make it means they shouldn't be in the top tier, in my opinion. I disagree with that completely. If this team with those mutants on the back ends in the playoffs with the, what they have up front too, you're telling me that they're they're what like a bottom tier team just because they're a wild card spot? No, I, I mean starting I, goalie for half the year, they battle injuries more than anybody else almost. Yeah, no, I, I like that. I, I like them at, at the price they're at, but I don't know if I have them above like the likes of. Is this a regular Colorado. season ranking or is this a playoff ranking? That's all. It's a Stanley Cup contender tier ranking. Uh, that's what there we're doing go. here. There you go. Um, all right, we are brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets. When bigger, I'm betting smarter this season with Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting analytics platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Research every bet with historical stats and data. Enter any parlay idea into Hall of Fame Bet's revolutionary parlay optimizer tool. Two can hit rates broken down by leg as well as an expected probability for the entire parlay. Sort all players by hit rate for any bet to learn which players are hot and which picks have value. Stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame Bets to craft more intelligent data-driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start researching, start winning with Hall of Fame bets. Moving down to the second tier, tier 2A. Don't have fancy words like uh, town there. Big dick. Very fancy. Tier. Yeah, he suggested uh, before that I should use uh, I don't know, a Harry Potter thing. I can't remember what you said, uh, but uh, I never had time to come up with that. Um, yeah, so this tier, 2A, we have two teams. Oilers, one of them. Um Problem with them, of course, is their, uh, you know, historically their their goaltending and defensive play has let them down. But other than that, I think that this team is is legit uh, best regular season team for me. They're certainly that that's where the power rating has them. It's just uh, the, the previous historical uh, success of this team has has been uh, a bit wanting. But with McDavid uh, on, on the forward end, we have Bouchard there, who's who's a lead on the power play. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I would qualify him as a le legit number one D man. So that is a bit of a concern as well. But uh, when you have McDavid and Drysdale and those guys firing, um, it's it's all good. One more concern is that this team is is um, very reliant on the power play. Um, we know the first two games or so of, of the, uh, the the playoff series. There's actually more penalties called than in the regular season, but after that. The refs start putting their whistles away until it, it gets like, um, you know, they, they hardly call anything towards the end of the series, and, and certainly not in overtime. So uh, you need, you definitely need five and five plays. So that's another their little category we have to uh, factor in. And the, the Oilers are a great five and five, but they do lean on their power play a little bit too much for my liking. So uh, that's why they are a tier below the others. And um, the other one in this tier, a team that I bumped down a little bit here with the Boston Bruins. Uh, yeah, the, the lack of the uh, you know the the elite center is, is certainly a problem. We have uh, Charlie McAvoy, who's who's doubtless one of the, uh, the the better defense in the league, and Swayman, of course, in net uh, is, is massive. But they they lean too much too much on him. Like he he's he's getting all the work done. But uh, I, the playoffs, you can't have a guy just continually uh, bearing that kind of workload without getting some help. And 
And that goes for the other side too. Like they lean so much on Pasenek to get their offensive work done. So I, I like this team quite a bit, but uh, they're not among the uh, the true true elite yet, um, based on these deficiencies. And so one tier below them, minor minor drop is the uh, Winnipeg Jets by themselves in tier two B. What Flyers card? Oh, nice. Um, yeah, the Winnipeg Jets. This is a team built for playoffs. I mean, they have excellent defensive discipline. And they had the goaltending, of course, but Hellbuck hasn't exactly been great in the playoffs. He's been very much a regular season goaltending goaltender. Um, the playoff performances haven't been exactly elite, kind of like uh, you know a, a better version of Freddie Anderson, you might say. Um, but yeah, Mark Scheifele, I don't know if you'd call him a, a number one center in the elite status. Um, Josh Morris, the same kind of thing, but they're close. They're close enough. Plus, they're they're. Built with depth now. We got uh, Tyler Foley in there. Sean Monahan has, has worked out really well. And uh, yeah, Nikolai Ehlers, Cole Perfetti. They got studs all down the up and down the lineup. Um, they they have they have trouble scoring goals though. So if they get from behind, if if they go behind, it's it's hard to see them um, you know making a, a real spirited effort to uh, come back in a game. So this is a, a front leading team, which is okay in the playoffs, I guess, because um, we usually get tighter games anyway. So Jets in tier two B, I think that they are a team to watch out for, but. Um, Again, not among the uh, the very elite. All right, so yeah, my, my top tier was was the Canes and, and Panthers, just because they're like not likely to win the win their division, but like I think they're going to definitely win their, their first round, so they're going to you know ha have a good chance to make the conference final at the very least. My second tier is kind of just the the West teams that I, I agree there with, like at, at my my tier is Edmonton, Colorado, Dallas, Winnipeg. Edmonton maybe deserves to be a, a, a little bit. I don't know, maybe a little bit higher, but also a little bit lower. Uh, Doug Doug Reed pointed out in the catch, Edmonton's coach playoff history. Uh, yeah, Knobloch here, interim coach. Not sure how he's going to fit out in the uh, playoffs here, but you know they obviously have have Skinner now, who's been showing up. Ekholm, they traded for last deadline, have two great lines now. Henrik gives them some depth, so and they have the the past history of losing in the playoffs, so that, so they know what they have to do to kind of bear down there a little bit. Then I can't really separate too much of Colorado, Dallas, and Winnipeg, just because I don't know how that division is going to shake out. Whoever wins that division definitely has a huge advantage as long as they're not playing the Golden Knights in the first round, because I think those two teams that finish second and third are just going to beat up on each other. Whether it's the you know Avs for Stars or Jets for Stars, two teams that probably go six or seven games, while the uh, top seed there is able to probably dispatch other team in, in five or six games. So, yeah, I think those central teams, you know, if you can t find central division to win the Stanley Cup, you get all three of them. That might not be a, a, a bad bad look there because I think the Jets, Avs, and Stars all have what it takes for different reasons. Jets and Stars have the goaltending. Avs have McKinnon, McCarr, obviously, they have the history there as well. And Stars, that we've been talking about them, the uh, good good mesh, good mesh meshing of the, the veterans and the rookies now with Stankovin as well. Ottinger has showed up in the playoffs before too, so... I like those central teams and then Edmonton too. I think Edmonton, I think their their odds are maybe getting too low now at eight to one, but I think they're definitely one team to watch out for there in my second tier. Eight to one is one of the better prices too. Like I've seen it <laughs> yeah. six to one. Yeah. It's crazy. All right. For myself, for my second tier, T keep in mind, I did all these while Joel was explaining the segment. So, you know, bear with me if you think I'm wrong. Uh, this is called the tier looks good in a nice suit as this tier all these teams clean up well look good in a nice suit uh first team i have in this tier would be the boston bruins joel touched on it um yes we all know what the boston bruins are capable of on any given night does that mean they should be a top tier team i don't think so does that mean that they're like a lower tier team? By no means, man. So I think this is a perfect spot for them in the number two slot. Uh, Joel said something very true. They rely a lot on Pasternak. Uh, myself, him, and Archer were talking about this a little bit in the Discord the other day. And then you look at them on paper. There's a little bit to be desired, especially down the middle. And also, man, I've been saying this for a while. It doesn't get any traction. They give up 40 fucking shots a game, man. And yeah, Swayman and Allmark are the, probably the 
and you can't even argue it. They're the best goalie tandem in the entire league. But through an entire playoff series or playoff like push grind, like you try to go four series to the Stanley Cup final, that's a lot to ask for your goalies when you're playing every other night for Christ's sakes. Can they do it? Of course they can. Is it a viable, you know? trip to the stanley cup i don't think so man i think that they're hanging their guys out to dry a little bit here i'd say defensive they're lacking a little bit you know mcavoy's a hell of a defenseman um the uh the the sum is greater than the than the the parts of the whole the whole the parts whatever like yeah they played fine but um but yeah i, I have them in the second tier here uh my next team would be the tampa bay lightning much like the Vegas Golden Knights, everyone's sleeping on my boys in Tampa here, man. And you're telling me that a team with fucking Nikita Kucherov having arguably the best year he's ever had in his entire life, the guy's active in 50% of every goal pretty much that this Tampa Bay team has had. We know what Braden Point can do in the playoffs. If Sergachev comes back healthy, Victor Hedman's an animal. We're starting to see what we want to see out of a guy like Vasilevsky. Hell, he can win you a series or two on his own if it comes down to it. An underrated good coach, John Cooper, man. A team that's been there before. Is the depth lacking compared to other years? Of course it is. But would they be would you be surprised to see Tampa make it to like the 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 semifinals or something? I wouldn't, you know. So I think they belong in the second tier here. Um Another team I have is the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, great system play. Man, I've been preaching system play on this podcast pretty much ever since we started it. And there's no better defensive system play in the NHL than what we're seeing out of Rick Bonus's Winnipeg Jets this year. Hopefully, he'll be coming back to the team very soon. We talked about that a bit last show. Uh, goaltending, they're absolutely phenomenal. Larry Brassois is like 40 saves right now, even though he's losing 3-1 to Winnipeg or to New Jersey. Um, you want to see a bit more from them offensively. And I think they have the capab- capability to do it. Like a- Ehlers is an awesome player. Shifley, when he's going, he's cooking. He's a he's a star centerman in this league as well. Kyle Connor, if he can stay healthy, he's one of the best goal scorers in the league. He's you know should be a fifty goal scorer. Um, so yeah, defensively, Morrissey's. I don't want to say has had a quiet year, but we saw how you know significant he was for this team last year, and we know he's capable of uh, of being strong on the back end. So love the Jets. Um, and then last team in my looks good in a nice suit ranking is the Dallas Stars. Um, older team. Older team, you know, with the likes of being led by Tyler Sagan and Jamie Benn, uh, a lot of it comes down to Ottinger. I was going to have them in my top tier, but we just haven't seen what we wanted to see goaltending wise from this team. Uh, with that being said, man, they were firing on all cylinders, you know, on all cylinders as of late. Defensively, they improved that in tan up into what is already a, a pretty fucking stellar decor as well. And they, they do have some young guys, like we talked about, like Stankovin, obviously, Jason Robertson, still young. Uh, don't forget how good Rupe Hints was in the playoffs last year. He was an absolute superstar, so maybe in that first round, if you can catch the book sleeping a little bit. I know he hasn't had a great year, but maybe like take a look at his shot totals or point totals in the first round because you know all, all signs are showing us that he can show up in the playoffs. So I'll be keeping an eye out for that as well. One more thing on the Jets. We talked about that. I think people are sleeping on their trade deadline additions of Monaghan and Toffoli, mm-hmm. and their odds are at 15 to 1. And like Dallas is there at 12 to 1, too. I think that's good value, but like I think Winnipeg should be a lot shorter than that. I think th- no matter what, they're going to have a tough first round matchup, which is why they're so long. But if they can get past either the Knights if they win the division or the Avs or Stars if they come in second or third, I think they're pretty good to go potentially all the way. Okay. Yeah. And you mentioned that central bet. That's been something I've been, uh, you know, mentioning quite a bit throughout the season. It's still, uh, it's still some decent uh, odds there, but they certainly dropped after uh the stars and the, the avalanche went on their um late heaters and of course the, the jets continue to do their thing but still i think i would bet that more than uh certainly more than pacific or the the metro anyway but anyway going down to the uh the third tier where are we at here we got the three teams in this tier this is where i slotted in the knights mm, of course we know about their pedigree they've been in the playoffs all, every year but one of their uh their short history and they've been uh, dangerous in pretty much all of them you know there was uh, the one uh, year they got knocked out early by the the sharks and that crazy uh five minute power play they had uh anyway oh, yeah. Uh, yeah uh this team is uh built from the back end with those uh, tree trunks they got back there a bunch of uh Solid defense and Mark Stone is the heart of the team and all that. Uh, problems for this team though are are the goaltending, as Talon mentioned. Uh, you know, Aiden Hill is is have certainly fallen off this year. Had a great start to the year. I mean, he's the only reason why they won like the uh, first eleven of their twelve games or whatever it was. He was absolutely killing it, and then he got hurt, and uh, 
uh, nights fell apart and they haven't really uh, put themselves back together since then. I know they got these additions now, Thomas Hurdle, Hannafin. Hannafin looks actually really good early on, but still, it, this team does not look good. They're, they're, they're a 500 hockey team right now. They're sure, like, at what point do we just say that they're, they're not a great team? Um, yeah, of course, they'll get Mark Stone back in the playoffs, no doubt, after he recovers from his last red spleen. Thomas Hurdle, when he returns, I'm sure will elevate them. They certainly look good on paper, but right now they're – there's no effort. Like uh, we, we hear from um, Bruce Cassidy all the time, and in the press conferences, he's, he's just saying there's no will, there's no effort. Like every time they lose, that's what he says. And you know why? Because it's uh, the second year after after winning the cup. Um, you know, you get the Stanley Cup hangover, so you, you don't have the same kind of desire as those teams that have. Uh, it's been a while since they won a cup, and certainly after after you you won it, it's like climbing a mountain, coming back down, then you got to go climb the fucking thing again. It, it sucks. You don't want to do that. So uh, they, they know what it takes, and uh, it just takes a lot to do it again. I mean, it's only been done, what, twice in the uh, Stanley Cup era and, or salary cap era? And one of those was the bubble the bubble experience and then the, the weird divisional thing with the Lightning. So it's, it's just very, very hard to do. So that's why I'm down on the Knights, among other reasons. But, uh, yeah, they certainly have the, um, you know, the, the number one D – you could say it's it's Shea Theodore right now and uh, Jack Eichel, of course. But yeah, very a lot of problems with this team. Uh, next to it are the Rangers. Two lines on the power play. Someone fix their fucking bike. It's bugging me. It's Ryan. Is that me? Yes. It, Is that better? It. No. It's fine. It's you just better. keep touching it. I don't keep yeah. touching it. Something's yes. happening. <laughs> anyway, Rangers... Sturkin's looking great again. That's important for them because they do rely on their goaltending and the power play. But as we know, the, the power play does tend to dry up in the playoffs. Um, yeah, this just just team doesn't really doesn't really uh, impress me. <laughs> they don't impress me much, Shania Twain. Um, but no, <laughs> that's they, they, the they, dumbest they, yeah. thing I've ever heard you say. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the Rangers not inspire me. Okay, I, I, I got nothing here. Uh, <laughs> I just, I just don't know. I can't get my finger on it, but I just don't like this team. They're, their five and five metrics are not great. Don't like them very much. But the still, they they have uh, enough elite talent. They do have some speed left in them to to, to win this the the cup. So we got to put them here. Next to them, we have the, the Vancouver Canucks. This is a team that are uh, you know they're built like a playoff winning team. They got excellent five and five stuff. They got great goaltender. They got an elite number one defenseman, the best defenseman in the year this year, and. Um, Elias Patterson, of course. JT Miller has actually been been better than him. So you could say they have two number one centers, arguably. So the Canucks are built like a Stanley Cup winning team. And the problem is that they're they're still young. They're still they're still new. Like they they they're in the playoffs as a group just once, and that was in the uh, in the bubble, and that doesn't really count. And they were just just uh, it was really outstanding play by Demko is the only reason why they run won around. Um, so yeah, the Canucks, I think next year, year after that, after they get some painful experience, they'll be a force to reckon with. But right now, I, I still don't think that this is too early. Um, despite their their great year, they, they, they have some pain, some pain to endure, to feel mm. in order to uh, really build themselves up in the future to to actually win the thing. Um, two more teams in the, in the tier 3B. So below those three, we have the uh, LA. Wait, can, we, can we interject here but between 3A and 3B? Well, or do you want to just no, keep going? Just give her. Just give her. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you, you guys did for the first two two uh, tiers, but yeah, three A, three B here. Uh, Kings, uh, they are uh, again great five and five numbers. Problem is the goaltending. Problem is uh, um, their uh, their their goal scoring is, is kind of lacking. And you do need those game breakers in the playoffs to to do um, their job to to score goals and and to win these games that are really close. I wonder if they they have that. They're reliant just too much on just um, defensive structure and all that, and they, they can't get a goal themselves, uh, which is a concern when you have David Riddick and Cam Talbot behind you. I mean, they're they're certainly apt to let in a weak one. So that's my concern for the Kings. Uh, they do have a nice balance though of of um, veterans and youth though with with Kopitar and Dowdy still playing at a high level and all those young guys of Kempe and uh, and the like. Um, Arvidsson coming back like that maybe that that's the uh, game breaker they need. He just uh, scored a goal in his first game back. I mean it was a lucky one, but uh, he looked he looked absolutely sensational. Um, so that's important for them. 
also in this tier, the Tampa Bay Lightning. I, I, I got to put them here. I got to respect them because of their uh, pedigree and, and whatnot. Uh, the, the, the concern is that they're just a <laughs> terrible team, five and five. Absolutely a dynamic power play, of course. So they'll, they'll need to get a lot of opportunities that way. Vasilevsky has looked better lately, so that that's important for them because they'll need him to be, uh, you know, classic Vasilevsky in order for them to to win multiple rounds. So I have to put the Kings or the Lightning as a a serious contender just based on um, the history of this team, the pedigree, the culture that they have. Uh, but otherwise, I don't, I don't I, you know, for the past two years they have not been a, a great great team. So um, Sergeyev coming back is huge, but uh, we'll we'll see in the playoffs. I mean, they also have a terrible path too. With the first wild card spot, they got to play the one seed, and then after that is just a, a fucking gauntlet. So no easy rounds for the Lightning. Yeah, my uh, next tier, I guess you can call it the the choking hazard tier. I got the Rangers and Bruins there. I think they're both too reliant on either Pasternak or on their special teams and goaltending, both of them. And nope, that can carry them. Boston, I, I think you know they they got upset in the first round last year. Maybe that's not going to happen again. But I don't know if they're built to withstand that and the rangers might might win a round or two but i don't know if you know when they put the whistles away when they don't have the power play and their five on five numbers uh they were they have the ninth worst expected goals four percent in the league so that could definitely uh impact them come the eastern conference final if they play carolina or florida whoever whoever ends up being there and same thing with boston i just don't think they have enough enough depth and and and, and all that to, to eventually win it all but nope they're good enough to where they're gonna be Probably winning, probably winning a round or two, even though I think they may not. And then after that, I have uh, Vancouver, Toronto, and Vegas in, in the next tier. You know, Vancouver, Toronto, kind of similar. Have a lot of top tier players, but maybe not the maybe not the depth to to pan it out. Maybe not the history yet to pan it out. Toronto only won a, a round last year. Vancouver hasn't made the playoffs in the past, at least last year. I'm not sure if they made it two years ago, but I mean, Demko stepped up. Samsonov has the ceiling to be to show up in the in the uh, playoffs here. Matthews has been great. Marner's getting rest now with his ankle. Nylander has been great as well. So could see Toronto finally getting past the the Bruins here in the first round and making an upset in the second round. Uh, but yeah, Vancouver, I think they're good. And then Vegas, it's just the the issue is is goaltending. Aiden Hill before the injury was ten two and two with a nine thirty three save percentage, and since then is seven and eight with an eight ninety eight save percentage. So. You know, maybe he turns it on in the playoffs. Maybe getting everyone healthy helps him out there. But they're a good they're a good bet at the price they're at thirteen to one. Toronto twenty to one. I like that as well. But yeah, I think I have them. I have them a uh, level below the Rangers and Bruins, and even a step below more than that the uh, Western teams I talked about. <laughs> How many bets do you like? You like the central? You you think the stars there's value? You think that the Leafs have value? Like at some point you got to fade. Like most of these teams, I don't think there's really any value right now. I think the twenty one on the Leafs is too long. I'm I'm not. I wouldn't bet the central di division personally, but like I think that's something if you want to have have multiple teams in it. All right. All right, for my third tier, this is the tier that I like to call the good personality tier, you know, the good personality <laughs> teams, you know. Maybe they don't look the greatest, but they're nice guys. They're funny, you know, they make you laugh. They're a lot like us three, the, the good personality tier. I wonder you know? who's in this tier. The, the, the first team <laughs> I have on this tier is the Toronto Maple Leafs, <laughs> baby, all right? And um, I'm going to say something here that I know you two are absolutely going to disagree with wholeheartedly here. Um. I think that this team has put together a playoff caliber defense. Whether they choose to ice that defense, that's a whole other story. We finally saw Sheldon Keith's at TJ Brody last game. Um, TJ Brody has had an awfully terrible year. TJ Brody has been a great asset for the four years that he signed with the Leafs. It hasn't been until this last year of his deal that he's been struggling. With that being said, with him out of the lineup, the pairings that we have in place – have been gelling you have labushkin playing with morgan riley which is surprisingly it wasn't great the first time around it's looked fine like you got a puck moving defense with morgan riley with the offensive capabilities and a stay-at-home d-man that can cover for him and be strong at pushing guys in front of the net oh yeah labushkin all right if you sit if you sit brody that leaves you with mccabe and benoit who arguably were the best deep pairing and a shutdown deep pairing the Leafs had when Riley was hurt. And then Joel Edmondson and Timothy Lilligren have surprisingly found something special with Lilligren on the right end. And so I'll tell you what, man, and this is what you guys are going to disagree with, is that when it comes to me, playoff hockey from a defensive point of view, you don't need. It's nice to have. 
You don't need those steady fucking puck moving defensemen to make a split back move and find a fucking open play every goddamn time they have the puck. The most important thing is when you're in trouble is to get the fucking puck out of the zone. And if you try and sit here and tell me that anybody that I just named on that decor can't do that, then I'd tell you you're just out to lunch, man, because they can. And they're all physical. Fucking every there's at least one guy, sometimes two on those lines that I mentioned that can box out and move guys away from in front of the net. So from a defensive point of view, I think a lot of people are going to be surprised. Now, does that mean that the Leafs aren't going to give up a lot of two on ones and plays off the rush and stuff like that? Hell no. But they're going to be tighter in their own end when they're hemmed in, which is a problem they have had. And with the offensive firepower, the thing that this team needs for success is just for their big dogs to be their big dogs man you know you need to see a series out of matthews the marner injury it's not looking great guys a high ankle sprain who knows if he'll be 100 percent back before playoffs he'll play in the playoffs i'm just not convinced that he's going to be 100 percent. the one other thing that i hate right now is that they're still even though sans has played great and wool you know coming back off an injury they haven't declared a number one and they're going to let these guys compete 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 and they're just going to ride the hot hand going into the playoffs and i hate that because if one buddy, if one person has a bad game, that's when you start having goalie questions. And you need a solidified number one guy. I'm sorry. So I don't like that. But I got the Leafs in my third tier. Uh, I also have Colorado in my third tier. They could be higher. I don't love what I'm seeing in net. And I don't really love what I see from a depth point of view. They have been better lately. And they did make some good acquisitions of the deadline. I think Middlestad's a stud that they can have for them. Um, on the back end, too, Sean Walker's been an absolute killer. Don't get me wrong here. I'm just not convinced when it comes to a full-on depth team. Like, I don't know. If they somehow find themselves playing against, like, a Dallas or someone like that, I don't know if they can match up line per line. Uh, for one for one skill of course nate dog's awesome uh ranton is awesome if for some miracle landis god comes back hell yeah you have in the car but it just worries me when you get to those third and fourth line minutes i guess um and this team i do have the good personality traits i have the nashville predators might take a little bit of heat for this one man but i'll tell you what they've been playing great fucking hockey at the right time of the year and if you go back to our our season previews with the nashville predators I brought up a point saying that we're hearing a lot of good things as far as like camaraderie coming out of this camp. And I know that sounds so fucking stupid and like, yeah, you can't analyticalize it or whatever the fuck you want to do. But I'm telling you right now, it's so goddamn important. And it's teams like that to find a way to go on a run, sneak into a wild card spot. Everyone's playing for each other. They have strong system play. UC Saros has capabilities to win games on his own. I kind of like the Preds as a sneaky team, man, even being in a wild card seat. So I put them in my good personality traits here, here. Uh, and then my last team, which I mean, a lot of people won't agree with, they probably have them higher, is I have the Edmonton Oilers in my third tier. Um, offense capabilities, through the roof. Of course they are. Depth, eh, don't love it past the first two lines. Defense, I don't love. My biggest question for this team is goaltending. I was going to save this for a, a hot take segment we were going to do. We're not going to have time for that, so I'm just going to say it now. I wouldn't be surprised if Stuart Skinner loses his starting job in the playoffs. We saw it fucking happen last year. He disintegrated. We saw the same. Jack Campbell took the fucking job for him last year. They have Calvin Pickard who's playing fine, but you know who else might take the fucking job from him? Jack fucking Campbell. Everybody's just shitting on this guy. Let me tell you right now, his numbers in the AHL, everyone's sitting there. Yeah, every time that's a bad goal or that shootout goal that we saw trending and shit. Yeah, we're shitting on Jack Campbell. His numbers in the AHL, he has a 2.58 goals against average and a 0. .920 save percentage. If he had that in the NHL, we'd be fucking talking about this guy every goddamn day. And I've said it before on this show, the AHL from a goaltending point of view is a goddamn harder league than the NHL because there's zero good defense in the AHL because if any of them were fucking good, they'd be up playing in the NHL for Christ's sakes. There's a lack of defensive system play. And this guy has great numbers down there in the A and nobody's talking about it. So I'm just, I'm not convinced on Stuart Skinner when it comes to a playoff performance based off what we've seen last year. And I wouldn't be surprised to see my boy Jackie coming in and stepping up and playing playoff games for Edmonton. You can laugh all you want, man, but I'm just going to tell you if it happens, uh, it's not going to catch me off guard. We've seen that before from Jack Campbell, though. Like he always builds his way back up, and then he falls back down. It's He's been like great the in the playoffs, though. Like he was great last year. He was great with the Leafs every time he played a playoff game. He kept them in every series that they played with. So I, I don't know. I'm just I wouldn't be surprised to see it happen. That's all. Uh, his HR numbers are great. The past five games, he's allowed five goals total. So like he's he's on a roll right now. Mm -hmm. No salary cap either in the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not a buyer. If they have to roll with Jack Campbell, Oilers, I gotta drop him uh, another tier. But uh, 
yeah, going down to the final tier for myself. Only two teams here, and they are the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, uh, I mean, they have obviously immense potential offensively, but uh, historically, they're a team that that struggle to perform the same way in the playoffs as they do in the regular season. That's always been their issue, and they are a little bit more balanced this year. They are getting some depth scoring finally, which is encouraging. Five and five numbers are, are still, uh, you know, above average, not elites. Um, their power play has really fallen off, but um, I, I expect that to uh, rectify at some point. Um, the goaltending, I guess Joseph Wall was, was was solid in the playoffs last year, and he's been uh, good again this year when he's healthy. So, yeah. I, I just he won that just... Tampa series. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's a... Oh. Oh no, we lost. Oh, Joel. I blew his brain when I said Samson won the series. He just this couldn't handle it. Yeah, Joel, I could, I could hear you the whole time, bro. A good restart. Just do whatever, say whatever you're gonna say. Correct. Do you hear me? Now we yeah. can. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Leafs are uh, just historically not a team I, I want to back with with their um, you know, history of choking and whatnot. So uh, the. the yeah, it's possible for them to win. That's why they're in these tiers. I don't have teams that I think can't win, but uh, they need Matthews to play like he's at the heart level. He needs to put the puck in the net almost every game in order to uh, make up for their, their bad defense. And their, their path is, is really bad because they're a bad matchup for the Panthers and the Bruins with how they they can't move the puck from the back end. And those teams can forecheck like bitches. And uh, that, that's a problem when you, when you can't move the puck uh, consistently. So, yeah, yeah they got some bigger guys. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, they have some bigger guys, of course. That's important. Get some grit back there. But, yeah, moving the puck has been a problem. And when you're, when you're you know, faced with the relentless forechecking of Boston and, Pan- and Florida – it uh, becomes a bigger issue. So that that's my concern with the Leafs. Finally, uh, we have the New York Islanders, but they just lost to the Red Wings. What? I don't even think that they're making the playoffs. What? what? You have the Islanders on your rankings? Yeah. Because, you don't, you don't uh, have the Predators at all? I love ta- I love Talon having the Predators that high. I loved it. No, Predators, Predators make sense. I could add them here in, in this like uh, distant, distant tier, but... I have the Oilers just because of their um, uh, how they're playing lately and the lead top end goaltending and whatnot. Predators are it's just too early, like like the Canucks, except without the great season that they've had this year. The Predators just don't have the top end talent. I know they have Ryan O'Reilly, former um, Conn Smythe winner, but he's still not the player he was back then. A lot better this year than last year, but still not nearly the same guy. And uh, after that, it's, it's just a lot of guys that are that are young. It's just too early for the Predators. Certainly a bright team going forward, but. Uh, Again, too early. I love Andrew Burnett, the coach. I think he's got something building. Barry Trotz, of course. I like them long term, but uh, this year is just uh, it doesn't make sense for them to win the cup this this soon. So, yeah, they're, they're peaking at the right time. I could see them winning around, maybe two, but to go all the way with these guys, that'd be something miraculous to me. So uh, they don't make sense at all. Islanders, just because of the way they play, uh, I, 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 I might just boot them off the fucking tier for losing another lock on. <laughs> stuff like that, right? like, fuck. Uh, no, I, I I don't know. Islanders are distant, distant Pope. I mean, they just they don't really they fit either. So I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm giving up on the Isles too. So yeah, I mean, you might as well have the Preds on there because neither of them are winning. Yeah, uh, my my final tier is the Kings, Lightning, and Predators. I think you know the Kings and Lightning have. Good regular season teams, but the Kings goaltending Riddich and, and Talbot isn't gonna win them a cup, I don't think. And the Lightning, yeah, they, Vasilevsky can turn it on. They have a great top line. John Cooper's a great, a great uh, coach, but I don't see them getting through through two rounds here, especially depending on what their matchups are. It's gonna be hard either way playing the top team in the division. Uh, but the Preds, I mean. Fred's 50 to one for the cup. Maybe, maybe not going to win that, but you could eventually hedge that out or, or, or something there. I think they could definitely win a round or two. I think right now they're slated to play either the Jets or the Canucks in the first round, which would be a, a decent matchup for them. Saros has been good. Don't have the top level talent, like Joel said, but I mean, Forsberg, O'Reilly, Nyquist has been great there. Roman Yossi's been good. Uh, coming into tonight's game against the Panthers, which are up 2 nothing. 
in the third period, I believe. They're 13-0-2 in their past 15 games with 29 Damn. goals against. So they're playing insane defense, great in net. So I think they're a book for the playoffs. Maybe they're peaking too soon, but I, I think they're a team to watch for a, at least a first-round upset. Interesting. Uh, okay, for my fourth tier or tier here, I'm not going to dive too into these, uh, but I named this tier called the Nerds that started going to the gym tier. So it's like, yeah, you, know, you guys are starting to look all right, but I mean, you're still a bunch of fucking nerds, and everybody knows it. And you can't really like, talk to like chicks or anything. So uh, first team I have on the Nerds that started going to the gym tier, and I think this is a perfect way to define this team, is the Vancouver Canucks, all right? Yeah, the firepower is there. Firepower is there. If Demko's in net, sure, but... Something about this team, man. It's like you saw this. You used to see this team eating boogers in class, and they they're always getting that like the, the dirty sandwich in their desk and shit, right? And I'm just not convinced that what they have is gonna is going to. What's the word I'm looking for? Is going to manifest itself in a playoff scenario okay especially depending on who they have to play against so uh, i'm a little down on the canucks uh the la kings as well um let's face it they're gonna get shit punched by the oilers in the first round like they have the past two years so sure can they win yeah are they gonna probably not uh philly i put philly in this too because they exceeded all expectations this team just started taking creatine for days you know steroids but like they're, they're still the team that you saw that put tic tacs in their nose and you know look like losers and then just you know do extra maybe bully to get their math homework tic tacs so, in their nose the, I, I don't know i'm just saying shit bro uh and then <laughs> in this year i have uh the st louis blues man you know they're not out of it probably out of it probably not gonna make it but hey you never know big win tonight against the Sens here they're still in it what are they like four points out of a spot right now so stranger things have happened um and then i think you guys are done so i'm just gonna quickly say my last tier just because the name's funny and i'm not gonna go into the teams but uh, i was gonna call this the archer tier but i decided to call it the <laughs> i decided to call it the friend zone tier instead uh in which they have the detroit red wings the islanders minnesota and washington as part of the archer aka the friend zone tier I like it. Mm-hmm. All right. Anything, any other teams we're ranking here, boys? I think that was a success. We're just kind of tossing it together last minute. I think we did good there. No, sure. No. Yeah, yeah, that, that was, was kind pretty of, good. I'm not sure if that's what Joel had intended, but I feel like it ended up being a pretty good segment. I think it was okay. I yeah. said everything I wanted to say. Um, the only bet out of all that is, is still, once again, just the central and the Atlantic divisions to win the, the Stanley Cup, I think, is the uh. The only thing I would go with at the moment. I mean, the Jets maybe because they're they're the longest of all these uh, in, in the the top or t- upper tiers. But after that, I, I don't think that there's 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 too much. Maybe the yeah the Predators fifty to one. Uh, if you just want to throw down them, but I wouldn't do that. The Leafs I thirty saw- to one to win the cup, baby. Thirty to one, the Dominator. Thirty? Oh, with the Dominator. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I saw something about the Jets where Brassois, yeah, Brassois has to play seven of the of the last fourteen Jets games to win the Jennings. I'm not sure if that has to be like if there's like a minimum right. game played there, but like hmm. they're obviously going to fight for the division. But I could see them, you know, le- lessening the load for Hellebuck going into the playoffs, which would only help him. Interesting. Interesting. I don't know. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. That's a good nugget. Well, that's something to track on the radar, especially if you're betting individual games. He played great tonight. Like, what do you have, like 42 saves or something to end the they game? They might need him in the playoffs play. if Hellebuck does uh, what he did against Vegas last year. It's a good point, man. Uh, you're right. I mean, he, Bruce Hall was the team, was the guy who beat fucking the Jets in that in that series, right? Bruce yeah. Hall was excellent. He, he did. You're Hellebuck. right. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh, all right. Wrap this one up. I think we're good. Hell yeah. yeah. Yeah, all right, all right. We go check out the sports gambling podcast our website. That's the place to be. Tons of stuff in the world of sports, baby. Uh, obviously, we got hockey four games tomorrow, but you know what? We're going to be back uh, recording tomorrow night because we're going to have a big slate for Saturday. So, hell yeah. Uh, what else going on? You know, March Madness, it's getting madness full in here. It's like the macho man, the madness when he was in WCW, a part of NWO. Let's go, baby. Uh, what else going on? We got baseball, we got fucking NFL draft coming up here. I'm sure there's stuff going on in like NASCAR, F1, MMA, golf. Not really tracking Valspar this weekend, you know, taking a little little break after after putting my big dick on the wall last weekend. So 
a ton of stuff in the world of sports. Uh, you can find that on all that information at the SGPM website. Be sure to go check it out. Uh, listen to the other shows. Everybody does such a kick-ass job, man. We mean that, especially this time of year. There's so much going on. Uh, and uh, check out the articles, man. Ryan's been banging out these fantasy hockey articles all year long. And I'll tell you what, dude. It's a grind. I did it for like two weeks or something like when we first started this show. And I, I it's tough to do. So give our boy some credit. He's putting the effort in. And he does a really good job of it, too. So be sure to read those articles, man. Uh, and he's killed it all year long so thank you very much for that ryan um and if you want to get the discord as well shout out to all our friends and pals in the discord discord's always popping off we're having a blast in there i haven't looked tonight but i'm sure it's going off everyone's having a good time uh if you want to get in there reach out to myself or ryan on twitter we'll be sure to point you in the right direction uh or you can reach out to the hcp twitter account social media assistant producer he's a killer he'll get you it might be a little sad because of his red wings as of late but it'll still be sure to get you right in there do everything you need to do uh or what you can do is just fucking bet the Leafs to win the playoffs because Joel Meyer knows in the bottom of his heart, in the bottom of his heart, baby, in the in the conference finals, Eastern Conference finals, it's going to be the Philadelphia Flyers against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And then whoever wins that is going to play the Minnesota Wild in the Stanley Cup final. And he'll have no other choice but to cheer for either my or Ryan's team. So when you're doing that, you can ask him how to get in the Discord and he'll be sure to uh, point you in the right direction as well. <laughs> definitely the flyers that's the only uh, <laughs> possible there we go there we go you are an asshole <laughs> why <laughs> because I've, come on I've, I've hated toronto for like 15 years man so it's it's not per, nothing but personal. You, but you love me yeah but you're only one person in, in all toronto you're the <sighs> only good one <laughs> keepers creepers and jess is yeah. cool too thank you i bowie what the fuck yeah you're right He's <laughs> all right if you like what you hear make sure you subscribe on youtube apple podcast uh spotify leaves a five-star rating and review on apple and i'll read it here at the end of the show pump our tires up before the playoffs here we're trying to trying to get popped up you know we, we could we could use some help no reviews don't do it five, five stars only five stars only. <laughs> they can still be mean in a five-star review right uh, all right, everybody. My name is Tyler Jenkins. You can find me on Twitter at talent underscore Jenkins94. I'm Ryan Gilbert. You can follow me on Twitter at rgilbertsop. I'm Joel Mar, and uh, if I'm impressed, we finally got out of here just in time for the Washington State Cougars to take on the uh, who the fuck are they playing again? I don't remember, but I got I got the Cougs. Let's go, Cougs. Plus two and a half. Love Shocker. Here. Yeah, I was going to say, there's something in there, but you know, I mean, a little bit of... Uh, all right, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Peace.